Nestle brings to mind Crunch Bars, Nespresso maybe, haagen Ice Cream, they own that too, various bottled water brands. Mark Schneider, though, the CEO of that company, when he thinks Nestle, he thinks pharmaceuticals, more specifically the intersection of nutrition and pharma. So two years ago, Nestle spent two and a half billion dollars to buy the company that came up with the first ever FDA approved medication for peanut allergies. Dasha Afanasieva is a consumer goods reporter for Bloomberg in London, where she wrote about Nestle's acquisition of the peanut allergy treatment Palforzia and the peril therein. Dasha, thanks for being here. It's good to be on. Thank you. People think of Nestle, as I said in the introduction, they do not think pharmaceuticals. How did it come to pass that Nestle spent two and a half billion dollars uh, on a pharmaceutical company that makes uh, very specifically this medicine we're talking about? Yeah, you're right. Uh, historically, Nestle is known for things like candy bars and infant formula, but it was looking for new avenues of growth and decided that sort of this crossover between nutrition and health and pharma was where it wanted to be and it would be a high growth area. So it invested in this drug and it didn't go very well. No, it, it didn't at all, which is why we're talking to you. First of all, explain how this drug works because, you know, millions of people have peanut allergies. It's a big deal for, for children. Explain how this thing works that, that would make it such, uh, such a promising investment for Nestle. So it sounded like a promising investment because it was FDA approved, but in reality, it's just peanut powder put into capsules and it's measured very, very precisely. You can give your child a little bit of this peanut powder, see how they do, and gradually work them up so peanuts aren't really as dangerous for them. It is, though, really high touch, right? I mean, it involves a lot of effort on the part of the would-be consumer to make this, this medicine, Palforzia, effective. That's right. So it happens over two years and it involves lots of visits to the doctor's surgery, lots of monitoring. If you're the child, there's lots of things you can't do around the time when you take this treatment because you kind of have to keep your body temperature the same. So you, you're not uh -huh. supposed to exercise, uh, you're not supposed to take hot showers. So it's a very big commitment for both the child and and the parents. Yeah. Nestle has, uh, since your initial article came out and, and since this drug has not caught on, um, Nestle has said they're going to sell it off. They're going to write it down to the tune of something like $2 billion. One wonders whether Mark Schneider, the CEO of Nestle, in trying to move the company, maybe kind of didn't read the room on this particular investment. Yeah, it's a funny one because he also used to be uh, the CEO of a, of a pharma okay. company. Okay. So if, if anyone should know... And, you know, since they've, they've formally launched the sales process, but as you said, they've taken a big write down. Hmm. I think that they're still super interested in stuff that intersects where it's, you know, health and nutrition and that sort of stuff. But pharmaceuticals is not going to be, um, something that Nestle invests in again. I think, you know, apart from this misstep. I think you also have to appreciate that the path to market is very different. You know, marketing to doctors and then indirectly patients is different to selling to supermarkets. Yeah. Right. Well, let's talk about that marketing thing for a second, right? Because it's a totally different ballgame marketing, you know, Nespresso with George Clooney, which Nestle owns, versus a, a really expensive pharmaceutical. It's super different because, you know, with Nespresso, it's similar in that you are getting, you might be convincing somebody that they need a product, but the people you're convincing are completely different. Right. And, you know, regulators are different in different countries. You have all these different bodies you have to convince of both, you know, the efficacy and the cost effectiveness of something. And then all of that has to sort of percolate through to the, to the end consumer and their parents, crucially. Right. So right. it's completely different to selling Kit Kats or Nespresso. Right. right. Dasha Afanasieva, she's a consumer goods reporter at Bloomberg News. We got her in London. Dasha, thanks a lot. Thanks so much. This final note on the way out today, a little reading between the lines on that speech that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen gave this morning, the one where she said the bank out, the bailout of SVB depositors, and this is a quote, she said, similar actions could be warranted if smaller institutions suffer deposit runs that pose the risk of contagion. Well, so far, so good. But then in the Q&A after the speech, she was asked what exactly those actions could be, and she said, quoting again, 
I don't want to speculate at this point on what those adjustments might be. What I'm focused on, she went on, is stabilizing our system and restoring the confidence of depositors. Confidence in banking is the whole ballgame. Marketplace is supported by AcreTrader, providing a platform for U.S. investors to diversify with historically inflation-hedging alternative farmland assets. Learn more at AcreTrader.com. All right, we got to go. Very quick moment of economic context, though. It's really a calendar update, actually. The first Senate Banking Committee hearing on SVB et al. Next Tuesday, the first of several hearings, said Chairman Sherrod Brown. Our digital and on-demand team includes Carrie Barber, Dylan Mietinen, Janet Wynn, Olga Oxman, Ellen Rolfus, Virginia K. Smith, and Tony Wagner. Francesca Levy is the executive director of digital and on-demand. I'm Kai Rizdal. We will see you tomorrow, everybody. This is APN. WNYC is supported by... Carnegie Hall, which presents Michael Feinstein in a multimedia program celebrating the life and songs of Judy Garland. March 29th. Tickets and information at carnegiehall.org.